Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 29 of my book a week and we've been talking about all the thrillers from next year. Let's get going. There's actually quite a few that I'm excited for so it's really surprising like everything for some reason just comes out and in January or February those two men seem to really be popular for new books to come out. Which I guess it kind of makes sense because it's the start of the new start of the month for the year so I guess that makes sense, but let's see what they are. So my first book is You Are Fatally Invited by Ande Pelego. When legendary author A. J. R. L. When legendary author J. R. L. is the highest struggling events coordinator Mila de Angel to host a murder mystery writer's retreat on his private island, she jumps at the chance. On the guest list are six thriller writers, and Alistair has told her to expect a week of party games, Trump fueled riddles, and maybe a jump scare or two. But when one of the guests turns up dead, it seems Alistair's real plan for the week is much more sinister. My next book is Claude Am House by Bailey Seabolt. On a blistering summer day in 1968, nine-year-old Tommy vanishes without a trace from Cardam House, an orphanage on the shores of Lake Champlain. Some say he then drowned him, unless he ran away, or maybe he never existed. Fifteen years later, his disappearance is still unsolved. Strolling true crime writer Alex Kelly needs a fresh start, but she is asked to ghost write a book about the orphanage and the ab abuse that occurred there. She packs up her belongings and moves to wintry Burlington, Vermont. As Alex tries to untangle the conflicting stories surrounding Tommy's disappearance, her investigation takes a chill, running, turning when she discovers a woman's body in a lake. Alex is convinced that death is connected to Cardam's house dark past. Even if local police officer Russell Parker thinks she's just desperate for a career-saving story, as the body count rises, Alex must prove that the key to fighting the kill will rise in Tommy's murderers, almost becoming the next victim. My next book is Dead Money by Jacob Kidd. A Silicon Valley fixer investigates a billionaire founder's death while pursuing her own agenda. In her job solving problems for Silicon Valley's most ruthless venture capitalist, Mackenzie Clients used to play for high stakes, even if none of the jaw dropping sums in play ever seemed to make it into her hands. But her new assignment is something else entirely. The Lightning Rod CEO of Tech's hardest startup has just been murdered leaving behind billions in dead money, frozen in his will, and as the company's chef investor, Mackenzie Boss has a fortune on the line, which means that solving this impossible crime has just become her problem. Mackenzie's lawyer is not a detective, but suddenly she finds herself riding shotgun with the FBI, guiding the agent in charge through the Silicon Valley's house of power, and a sequence of revealed and the true stakes of the case some come to light. It seems that she's just getting a deeper and deeper over her head, while Kenzie used in being underestimated. In fact, she's counting on it, because the way she sees it, this isn't just an investigation, it's an opportunity, and she'll do anything it takes to seize it. Anything at all. You know what they say, be careful what you wish for. My next book is This Book Will Barely Me by Ashley Winston. It's the most famous crime in modern history, but only she knows the true story. After the unexpected death of her father, college student Jane Sharp longs for distraction from her grief. She becomes obsessed with true crime, befriending armchair detectives who teach her how to hunt killers from afar. In this morbid internet underground, Jane finds friendship, purpose, and even glory. My next book is Death of the Author by Nindy Okafor. Disable, the future of storytelling is here. Disable, disinclined to marry and more interesting in writing than a look career in medicine or law, Stella has always felt the outcast of a large Nigerian family, that her fa life is upended when in the middle of her sister's lavish Caribbean wedding, she's unsimilarly fired from her university job, and to add insult to her injury, her novel is rejected by yet another publishers. With her career and dreams crushed in one fell swoop, she decides to write something just for herself. What comes out is nothing like the quiet literary novels that have so far prepared Peppered her unremarkable career. It's like far future epic where, she, where androids and AI wage war in the grown over ruins of human civilization. She calls it Western robots. When Zello finds the courage to share her strange novel, she does not realize she is about to embark on a life altering journey, one that will catapult her into a literary stardom. 
but also perhaps on probably everything her book was meant to be. From Chicago to Lagos to the far reaches of space, Zelda's novel will change the future not only for humanity but for the robots who come next. My next book is We Were Won by Chelsea and Zaha. Everyone knows the legend of Fairport 20 years ago, a shocking murder closed down the place. This year, the murderers will be bulldozed at last, but tonight it's not too late to die. All her life, Aiden Stafford has heard a lore about the abandoned beach resort at the edge of Edward since the notorious murder there. Anyone who sets foot on the property is cursed to die. It's more than just over than the years. Two high school students who dared to explore the village of Fairport Village were killed there. Aiden is no stranger to notoriety, having endured a family scandal that's made her a target of school. So when she reluctantly attends an overnight party at the limits, she's an edge, not because of some legend, but because the click that has made her life hell for years is there, to include Caleb Durham, the worst of them all. Yet out of all things Aiden expected to happen that night, finding another student at a Fairport village wasn't one of them. My next book is Wicked Darlings by Jordan Taylor. Aspiring journalist, Noah has a secret she's been keeping. Ever since her sister's tragic death, she almost felt re relieved. Noah and Leah had been locked in competition with one another since childhood, and things came to a head when her sister scored a glitzy inter internship at a New York Society newspaper. Noah can't help but revel in her newfound autonomy. But when she gets a lead about the sketchy circumstances surrounding her sister's untimely death, she knows she needs to investigate. She owes it to Leah. My next book is Murder Between Friends by Liz Larson. Two years ago, the murder of a neighbor tore three best friends apart. Now the killer's going to walk free, and the ex friends are going to have to face the past and in each other. Grace, Henry, and Allen grew up together on the same block. They used to be best friends until Grace's testimony put Harry's brother Jake away for killing the English teacher. Now, two years later, Ali and Harry hate Grace, and Grace is doubling what she thinks what she saw that night. It feels like everyone's getting a second chance, then when due to a mistrial, Jake is suddenly released, and Henry knows his brother is innocent. But when Grace reaches out to say she's rethinking what she saw the night of the murder, Jake's reaction is confusing. He doesn't want Henry or Grace getting involved. For Allie, not getting involved isn't an option. There's nothing Grace can say to convince Allie she's not the enemy. But can Allie afford to push Grace out when she's one of the only other people willing to believe in Jake's innocence? My next book is A Killing Cold by Kate Alice Marshall. A whirlwind romance. When Theodora Scott met Connor, wealthy, charming, and a member of the powerful Dalton family, she fell in love in an instant. Six months later, he's brought her to Idlewood, her family's isolated winter retreat to win his over to win his skeptical relatives. Stay away from the Connor and Dalton. Theo has tried to ignore the threatening messages on her phone, but she can't ignore the footprints. In this the one side, the cabin window of all the strange sense of familiarity she has about this place. And then, in a disused cabin, Theo finds something impossible. A photo of herself as a child, a photo taken at Elder World. I've been here before. Theo has almost no recollection of her earliest years, but now she begins to place together the fragments of her memories. Someone here has a shocking secret that they will do anything to keep hidden, and Theo is in terrible danger, because Dalton's do not lose, and discovering what happened in the world may cost Theo everything. My next book is Famous Last Words by Gillian McAllister. It is June 21st. The longest day of the year, a new mother Camille's life is about to change forever. After months of maternity leave, she will drop her infant daughter off at the daycare for the first time and return to her job as a literary agent. Finally, but when she wakes, her husband Luke isn't there and his place is a cryptic note. Then it starts breaking news. As a hostage situation developing in London, the police arrive and tell her Luke is involved, but he isn't a hostage. Her husband, darling father, a turner optimist, is the gunman. But then what she does next is crucial because she only knows what the note he left behind that morning says. My next book is Something in the Woods by Daisy Pierce. New newly minted child psychologist Mina has little experience in a field where the first people call the experts. She's been unable to get her feet wet and so she aimlessly spends her day stuck in a stifling heat wave, sweeping across Britain and anxiously contemplating her upcoming marriage to a careful, precise researcher, Oscar. The only reply for, for her small, close role is attending the local bereavement group to mourn her brother's death from years ago. 
That is, until she meets Jolla, Sam Hunter, and the Green Screen one day, and he has a proposition for her. My next book is Witchcraft for Way Word Girls by Grady Hendrix. I believe she's also the author of The September House, I believe, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna read, so, but well. There's power in a book. They call them wayward girls, loose girls, girls who grew up too fast. And they're sent to the railroad home in St. Augustine, Florida, when unwed mothers are hidden by their families to have their babies in secret, give them for adoption, most important of all, to forget any of it ever happened. Fifteen-year-old Florida arrives at the home in the swirling summer of 1970, pregnant, terrified, and alone. Under the watchful eye of the stern Miss Wellwood, she meets a dozen other girls in the same predicament. There's Rose, a hippie who insists she is going to find a way to keep her baby and escape to her commune, and Zena, a burning musician who knows she is going to home and marry her baby's father. And Holly, a wisp of girl, barely 14, new and pregnant by no one knows who. Everything the girls eat, every moment of the waking day, and everything they're allowed to talk about is strictly controlled by adults, who claim they know that what's best for them. Then Fred meets a librarian who gives her an ocular book about witchcraft, and power is in the hands of the girls for the first time in their lives. But power can destroy as easily as it creates, and it's never given freely. There's always a price to be paid, and it's usually paid in blood. That sounds so good, honestly. My next book is No Place to Hide by Megan Lally. To Brooke, image is everything. She looks hard to retain perfect grades, perfect looks, perfect life, especially after the incident that threatened all. Getting into her dream university and puts her that much closer to a fresh start. How can she say no to slow building with all her classmates? Hanging out with her crush by the bonfire is the perfect end night to end the night. Except it isn't the end. An old trunk is such aggressively tailored book and her best friend on the isolated road to one home. Someone thinks they know the truth about the incident and they won't stop until it's all out in the open. This terrifying driver is about to bring her books worse fears if she survives it. My next book is The Staircase in the Woods by Chuck Wendig. Five high school friends are bound in by an oath to protect one another no matter what. Then an ongoing camp trip in the middle of the forest, they find something mysteriously escapes to nowhere. One friend walks up and never comes back down. Then the staircase disappears. Twenty years later, the staircase has reappeared. Now the group returns to find the lost boy and what lies beyond the staircase in the woods. There's actually a whole bunch of legends surrounding staircases that actually do exist around the world, but I just find it so fascinating as, as to why they are there. Let me know if you guys know why they are there. I'm quite intrigued by it, so yeah, it's really interesting to know that we have them here. And my last book is At the Bottom of the Garden by Camellia Bruce. Clara Woods is a killer, and perfectly fine with it too. So what if she takes a couple of lives to make her own life a little bit better? At the bottom of her garden is a flower bed, long on the ground where her late husband rests in peace. All she always thought. Then the girls arrive. Lily and Violet are her nieces, recently orphaned after their affluent parents died on an ill-fated anniversary trip. In accordance with their parents' will, the sisters are to go to their closest relative, who just so happens to be Clara. Despite having no interest in children, Clara agrees to take them, hoping to get their hands on some of the girls' assets, not just to boast her widening fortune, but also to establish what hopes she will be her legacy, a line of diamond jewelry. There's only one problem. Riley can see the dead man at the bottom of the garden. She can see all of Clara's ghosts and call them back into existence. Soon Clara is plagued by her victims and at war with the gifted girls in here. Lily and Violet have become a liability and know far more than they should. I think that book reminds me of House of Salt and Silver. It kind of has the same vibe to it. But those are all the Thriller 2025s and that's probably hoping I'm coming out. They could change so you don't know. But but they all of a sudden really really good so I'm excited for them but let me know what, what thrillers you're gonna read for next year and please like comment and subscribe so even though fun for tomorrow's book away and I hope you guys enjoyed this so far it was really really fun to do this and in all honesty I think this is my probably my favorite one last year was just a baby one just to see how it goes but Honestly, I think this one will top. Until next year, we will see. I actually started planning for next year. So, I think next year is a little bit wilder than this one. So, I'm excited for it. <laughs>
but I hope you guys enjoyed Book Halloween. It was really fun. I feel like there was also some complications, but not too bad. So, yeah, it's been really fun doing this. I just, I just love it. So, yeah, but otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow for day 30. Bye-bye.